I'll get them clapping. Clap. Do your cheerleading. Hey, Margie. Hey, Margie. You turn my guitar down just a little bit. Turn it down. everybody. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm told I have to use the microphone for the online folks. Good morning, everybody online. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, when I'm up here, I need something. So I'm, I'm talking about the benefit coming up this uh, Friday and Saturday night or Saturday day. Um, I have sign-up sheets again. First of all, uh, I need to ask your forgiveness, and I know I'm in the right place for that. 
I had my sheet yesterday when Stacy and I went shopping with my sign-up people. But somewhere in the middle of Sam's or the car or outside in transport to into the church, I lost my sign-up sheet from the Sunday we signed up. So I know people had signed up for uh, beans. We got all the dried beans we needed. If you signed up to make beans, just re-sign up for me. Gallons of tea, re-sign up, please. And um, we, I have added... Uh, canned drinks to this for Saturday, for the concession on Saturday. So um, I just said Coke, Dr. Pepper, Sprite, and then I need my dessert people to sign back up. We need a lot of desserts. We have uh, 300 people we're planning for, so please sign up and bring a dessert. Now, let's talk about help that we need on Saturday. Saturday about 11 a.m., we're going to meet at the IOOF, I'm sorry, Friday at 11 a.m. for the benefit Friday night. We're going to meet at the IOOF around 11 and start getting things ready. I really need people, as many as I can get, that want to help scrub potatoes and make coleslaw and things like that to be there by 1 o'clock. We need to stuff things with napkins and so on. So I need a lot of hands preparing for the day. Then about 5.30, I need people to show up to help serve. 5.30 to 7.30 is the only time we'll need folks serving. So um, I don't want to have to make our kitchen help do that. So if you can show up from 5.30 to 7.30 and serve, we can use you. The silent auction will need folks from 4.30 to 7.30 to help move things, make sheets, and so on. Uh, the live auction is at 7.30. We'll probably need a few people to help move some items to the stage. And then clean up at 8 o'clock. We hope things move along pretty smoothly. Um, I've told the IOOF will be out by 9. Uh, so they can do their own cleanup. Okay, then on Saturday, that's our team roping event. There, um, We're going to have a, I don't know, sign up, registration, whatever you call it. Um, at nine o'clock, and the event starts at eleven. We'll have the concession. We'll have a concession trailer there available. So um, I will be there at eight a.m. with everything that we need for the concession trailer to set up. Okay. If you have some big coolers, if you want to get with me and give me a big cooler, uh, that would be great. I have one. Okay. So I'll be there eight a.m. to ten a.m. And then I, I'm not coming back. So 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'll be there. You have my phone number, and I need your phone number um, because I'm teaching on Sunday. So um, I need a couple people to sign up with me. And then after that, 8 to 10, when we're all set up, I just want two people there to work the concession stand. And I have the times here in two-hour increments 10 to 12, 12 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 p.m. for cleanup. And uh, Charky said if we, if we go long, it doesn't matter. We're still going to clean up at 4. If we finish early, we'll get on the phone and make some calls and let you know we finished early. And then I need help for the stripping chute and the roping chute. And I got that on the list too. So that's we got a big church, and we got a lot of hands and a lot of feet, and we'd like to have as many out there as we possibly can. All right, and so, um, of course, that benefit is uh, top of our mind. Uh, don't forget our Monday night service, our Wednesday night activities, and y'all be a part. We love you. I'm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, too, so um, let's just go to the Lord. Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, we know this day is going to be good because we're here in your house and we're spending it with you. And Lord, we don't have to hope. We know this day is good. And Lord, I just thank you for this band. And Lord, thank you for our pastor Charkey. His hands and feet serve this congregation so well. And Lord, I just thank you for everyone here. And everyone watching online, Lord, I ask that you put a hedge of protection around this church and our church family, Lord, our kids. And Lord, just, just be right in the middle of all that we're doing this next week. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm passing these around. 
All right, give her a hand because that was a whole lot of stuff to remember and say. And... All right, good morning, everybody. Is it good to be in God's house? A very loud amen. amen. It's good to see everybody. It's glad to have the folks that are looking in on the internet. Uh, glad everybody, visitors, good to see y'all. But we're just going to have a good time in the Lord this morning. In Psalms chapter 149, verse 3. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Here we go. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body. Thank you. 
thank you. All praise is his. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. Everybody has trials and temptations. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation.
There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. taking care of us so good. Amen. In James chapter 4 verse 8 Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You, you're double-minded. Here we go. I
praise God. All praise is His. Amen. chapter 2 verse 9 but as it is written what no eye has seen nor ear heard nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him I can only imagine what it
Give him all the praise you've been holding all week long. Let him know you love him. Amen. Wonderful job. Didn't they sound good today? Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you. I hope you've had a wonderful week in the Lord. Uh, you've been here with me, and I know you've had a wonderful morning in the Lord, because I've had a wonderful morning in the Lord. Hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will... Uh, We'll continue with the service. Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to be in your house. We can praise and worship and glorify you. Lord, we do look forward to the day when we stand in your presence, God. Lord, um, here on this earth, uh, Scripture says that we're just passing through, that this isn't our home, that we're strangers and aliens here. But our home is in heaven, and that's where our citizenship is. And so, Father, we look forward to being in our home. We look forward to being in the presence of our Lord and Savior. We're look, looking forward to seeing our friends like Randall again. and Those that we've lost as a church and those that we've lost as in our families, our loved ones. But Lord, most of all, we're looking forward to be in your presence. To seeing face to face Jesus Christ. Seeing the nail scars. Seeing the wounds and being reminded that that was because he loved us. Because you loved us. Lord, we look forward to understanding completely and fully what agape love is. A love that's full and complete and pure. Father, I want to thank you for our church family. I want to thank you, Lord, for how you're able to bless our community. And not only our community, but around the world. You're able to bless because of us. Because of maybe what we give financially, or our prayers, our ministry, our hands and feet. God, you're able to bless a community and even go around the world because we're willing to be obedient and to love. Father, I want to thank you for uh, this day. I want to thank you for the opportunity for this weekend to serve uh, a, a, just a wonderful family in our community, Lord, in our, in our church, and I pray that you would bless them completely and fully. Lord, I pray that as we leave this weekend tired, exhausted, God, I pray that we would... Uh, rest our head Saturday night and know that we served our Lord and Savior and we served our church family. Father, I pray that you would allow our best years to be ahead of us. God, we've had great years as a church. And Lord, we thank you for those. Lord, we pray that our best years are even ahead of us. And God, I'm not praying about just rear ends and seats. Lord, I, that's, it's always encouraging to see a church that's full Lord, we pray that our best years, what that means is our best years of service, our best years of ministry, and our best years of making a difference in a world that needs Jesus. Father, we love you and we praise you. We give you all glory and honor. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Well, amen. Hey, we just take a quick break. We uh, uh, take a moment to find somebody you don't know. Shake their hand. Make sure everyone feels welcome here today. We got drinks back in the back and a donut. Find one, grab a grab somebody, say hello, and then we'll get started again real soon. Kids, get out of here. Kids, you're dismissed.
Well, I think we're, uh, I think it's time to begin. If you can begin to make your way to your seat. We're going to be in Luke chapter 6 today. Luke. Well, had a had a good uh, good day here yesterday with uh, the Randall Cunningham funeral. Had a, a wonderful crowd, and then uh, as we were doing the procession, as we were leaving, uh, all the trucks with GoCo Trucking uh, led the procession. So there was about ten trucks leading. Uh, it was really it was pretty cool. I think he would be be proud of that. Uh, but anyway, thank the, I want to thank the church for, uh, for being here and being a part. I also want to thank those who, uh, it was a long day for many, uh, serving the family food, and, and uh, it, it was a pretty extended day. So I want to thank them personally. Also want to thank, I, uh, yesterday, or it, I began to uh, think about, um, uh, I, don't know, I don't know why it all of a sudden struck me, but I want to thank I want to thank each of you for your giving. We uh, uh, you just over when this last uh, the, just the end of this last year we had a big push and and uh, we had a big goal to pay off the new addition of the church and and uh, and you guys did it and, and I, I just want you to know I, I appreciate it. We as a church you guys you guys give. I, there was people who would just come up and and give and give a thousand dollars say hey I, I want to help make that happen and. Oftentimes, I don't think people really get appreciated for the gifts, for the giving, the sacrificial giving that they give to a church. And, uh, and for those who gave a special offerings or those who give just every, every week or every month, who, those who just support, I want you to know that, that I, I do appreciate you. Um, the church, it's, uh, you know, as a church, it's, it's wonderful to be able to, we had a, a missionary here Monday night. And wasn't that good? Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah, great. I really enjoyed it. And uh, and just, uh, uh, we, you know, gave him, uh, you know, just as a church, a thousand bucks, you know, here. just and uh, But but then you guys in the offering gave over, I, I didn't count it, I just gave it to him, but it was over $500. It had to be. So that was good. I mean, we uh, he's out, he'll, he'll be going back to Georgia and, and to the nation of Georgia and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's going to have, Jordan, and he's going to have a few dollars in his pocket that come from Lone Star. Uh, just this week, I was talking to an individual, uh, well, yesterday at the funeral, and, and uh, their church is um, the family that got shot. Just, you know, what a tragedy. And I asked him, their, their family goes to his church. And I said, is your church covering a bunch of that? And he said, I don't know. I'm, he said, I, I think they're going to be okay, but, but we may be helping with that. So I was able to say, just if if there is, just let let me know. I mean, we're all in this life together. We can we can help, you know. So I I say that to say, it's because of all of our giving, we're able to do those things. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, and we are making um, uh, we go beyond these four walls. Okay, we go far beyond these four walls, and and uh, and so anyway, I just that actually has a lot to do with my sermon, but it has nothing to do with my sermon because. Uh, it, it just uh, that was just laid on my heart, and uh, but the sermon actually deals uh, with money, and and I wasn't didn't give you that to, uh, anyway. You'll you'll see. Uh, uh, Luke chapter six. If you would find that with me, it says this: Jesus went down from them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of his, of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem, and from the coastal region uh, around Tyre and, Sid and Sidon. He had come to hear, they had come to hear him, and he healed them from their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured. And the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, 
for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. And I know the rest of this ain't on here, on the screen. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. As I was uh, preparing this message, I was really, you know, um, uh, it's just kind of a hard message to preach. And then I remembered a message that I preached years ago. And uh, I wish I could say that I honestly wrote this, uh, a lot of the content that I got today. But, uh, but it was come from originally from a guy named Andy Stanley. And then Andy, and then a gentleman named Josh uh, uh, Kershell then uh, 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 shared the same message. And so I'm going to follow a line of, of some fabulous preachers, uh, uh, Greg Kershell and Andy Stanley. But I believe that if we understand this passage, I believe that we can leave here today with a better understanding of who we are in Christ, our blessings, um, and, uh, and then how do we respond. In this passage, it said, blessed are you who are poor and who are hungry, and who are thirsty. Blessed are you. And, but then it goes on to say, hey, those who are rich, you need to understand that that could be all your blessing. So today, I want to ask you, how many of us wished we were rich when we were growing up? How cool would that be? Man, be the rich kid, that'd be awesome. You know, no, I ain't going to chase that money. My, I got too many. I got too many pages to chase too many bunnies today, so I won't do that. How many of you would admit that you have looked at someone who you know who's rich, and you've thought to yourself, "I could do better with that money." Yeah, I'd have more cool stuff. Yeah, I, I could do better with that money. I don't want you to raise. I mean, I don't. Don't raise your hand. Mike, you can raise your hand. How many here today are not just rich, but filthy rich? Here you go. Yeah. It's amazing how many people are rich, but they don't even know that they're rich. You could ask a person... Uh, 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 you could ask a person who you believe is rich and say, what is it, what's it like to be rich? And what are they going to say? I ain't rich. I ain't rich. Let me give you an example. You will see the issue with being rich is we don't know when we pass the line, right? I remember a Bruce Ford, I was, uh, oh, Bruce Ford's an old bareback rider, and they said, Bruce Ford just made a million dollars. He was a bareback rider back in the late 70s, early 80s. A million dollars, and Bruce Ford's back behind the buck and shoots, and he says, man, I wish I knew where it went, you know. The problem with the rich line is we never know when we get there. You never all of a sudden go to work, and you get your check, and you finally say, I finally made it. I'm officially rich now. I finally hit that dollar. We never know where that line is because the line just keeps moving further and further ahead. The, the more money I make, uh, I realize I'm not there yet. I, it's ahead, or at least that's how I think. Today, when you leave here, I want you to acknowledge that you have crossed that line. Church, I want you to understand today, you are the rich. And because God has blessed you with more than you truly need, you are to desire to be rich 
in what matters most. You see, today in this passage, it starts with, blessed are you who are poor and weak, and, and blessed are you who hunger. And we, oftentimes, we put ourselves in that category. But then when we read, but woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. We just put other people in that category. We've got to understand we have crossed the line. We are not in the top half of that scripture. Every one of us are in the bottom half. Because God has blessed you with more than you could truly need, we are to desire to be great at what's important. We are to want to be rich in every way that honors God. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and, 17 and 19, Paul shares with Timothy, and he instructs how the rich or how the wealthy should live godly lives. He says this, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming ages, so that they will be able to take hold of the life, which is true life. In this passage, Paul tells Timothy, teach the rich to not be arrogant with their money. See, in this time, you would have seen these would have been a people... In Luke chapter 6, why this is important is these people would have believed that wealth and prosperity would have been a sign of God's blessings. And if you didn't have those things, well, then you wasn't blessed by God. And that's why Jesus says, no, I want to rock your world. I want to turn it upside down. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst. There's blessings, the, the, the things of life, the money and all these things. That's great. But understand, you are a blessed people. But church today, we've got to understand when we talk, when we read scriptures about the rich, it's talking about us. He tells us, uh, Paul tells us, Timothy to tell the rich that they are uh, what they are not to do. And he says, don't be arrogant. Don't think that it's all about you. Yes, uh, we may have worked hard. There's, there's some of you in here who have, um, who have worked very hard and you've created businesses made good business decisions, you've invested wisely, and you lived beneath your, year, beneath your means. And because of that, you have created money. But we re need to recognize that every blessing we have had is truly a blessing from the Lord. Our talents are a blessing from the Lord. Our abilities are a blessing for, from the Lord. Our mind is a blessing from the Lord. And we've got to remember that. Some, of God, some people, God's just given a real knack. To create money. But church. We all. Have a great blessing from the Lord. And that's we're Americans. And because we're Americans. We are the rich. We've got to thank the Lord. For what he's got. What he's given. We each one of us need to be. As Paul tells Timothy. Not put. Uh, not put uh, uh, hope in our finances or what we have, but to put our hope in God, who is the one who richly provides. Church, every blessing, every blessing that, that we have that doesn't turn into praise to God has the potential to turn into pride. I got it. I'm just going to use, I, I, I uh, just recently bought a few cows and I got all my fence done on my place and, and, and it's, I'm really proud of what I, what, what I got now. And I can sit on my, I can go down to my pond or tank, yeah, whatever you want to call it. I can go down to my tank and I can, I can sit there and, and I can see everything I got. And I can think to myself, you finally made it. Got a double wide. Got my, I got my container with power in it. Finally made it. But church, I got to understand it's a, gift from God. He gave me, he gave me opportunities, blessings, 
gave me wisdom and maybe some courage to take some chances in some business stuff. Now, my place ain't any greater than anybody else's place. But I got to understand, it's a blessing from God. In a minute, I could lose it like that. So we got to understand that all of our blessings, see church, what we got what we got to be careful of is we often think we're the first part of Luke chapter 6 but we're not we're the second part of Luke chapter 6. And we could spend our whole life here on this earth indulging in our richness and die and God's going, "Hey, I blessed you beyond measure and you didn't do nothing with it." Today we need to define what is rich. If we don't know where the line is, then we don't know if we've ever actually achieved it. So let me give you some statistics. If you make $30,000 a year, let me start over. I knew that wasn't right. Uh, people, whenever, when we're trying to figure out what rich is, we the line moves. If people, uh, Gallup did a study and they said, They'd ask people who made $30,000 a year. They said, if, how much would you have to make to be rich? And at this time, they said $74,000 a year. I'd be rich. Okay. But people, when they asked people who make $50,000 a year, they'd say, how much would you have to make to make to be rich? And they'd say $100,000. If I made $100,000 a year, I'd be rich. Top 5% earners in the world, or in the United States, let me, let me rephrase that. Top 5% earners in the United States is 200000 per year. You ask them, top 5% in the United States, how much would it take to be rich? And they say, if I had $5 million, I'd be rich. You ask the poor guy who only made $2 million in his life, what would it take to, for you to be rich? And he would say, I, I don't know. I'm not rich, but I need more because the rich line just continues to move forward. Church, the problem is if we don't feel rich, if you don't feel rich, then you'll continue to just have a desire to get rich. And as you have a desire to get rich, you don't ever stop and realize that God's blessed us. He's already blessed us beyond measure. And then we don't read 2 Timothy and realize that Paul's talking to us. How do we live a life as filthy rich and do it godly? Every single one of us in this room are not just rich, but we're filthy rich. And because we are filthy rich, we all have rich people opportunities. You may say, how am I, how am I rich? Think about it. Your kids can go to the library here in Corsicana and get a wealth of knowledge. Okay, they can, they can ride their bicycle. Heck, even today, they can Uber to the, to, the, to the library, get a wealth of knowledge. That's a rich man luxury. We can take our kids and get their teeth cleaned and straightened for a low monthly payment. I thought about this one. I was thinking about this one. We are so filthy rich that when we become a little bit down and out, money's not, not necessarily in our possession, that we can go get food stamps. We can eat. We can get help with utilities and electric. That's a rich man luxury. We are rich. We can go to the right location in our community and they can help us. That's a rich man luxury, getting money for free. And I'm not, I'm not downing that. I'm saying we are a blessed people. You see, we get a blessing for being an American. Rich. 
There's lots of people out there in this world who have to go hunt through the trash to find their meal. We can make it. Even and if we find ourselves in a hard situation, we can receive it. That's a rich man luxury. We can save time with money. We can, we can save our time with money. We can afford to pay 5 or $10 to go to an automatic car wash so that we don't have to spend 30 minutes doing it for free. I, 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 don't, I, I hate washing my car. I don't ever do it. But that's a rich man thing. We can spend $10, or if you're Sheila, 15 It's a rich man luxury. I'm not rich. Yeah, you are. We can hire a babysitter so that we can go and spend an evening with our spouse. Church, we have enough money that if we see somebody on the side of the road who's struggling, you know, not the guy asking for it, but the guy that we happen to see, we may not be able to find a dollar in our pocket, but we can dig around in our, in our cup little thing and under our seat and find enough to buy him something to eat. And we've all done it. A rich man luxury. Church, we are rich because we have rich people opportunities. You, you watch them, you watch those, uh, those athletes, you know, maybe the football guys, and, and they'll tell their story. I came from nothing. And I became a multimillionaire because of football, which is great. But they got the wrong idea. Mama may not have had a whole lot of money, but he was wealthy because he had opportunity. He was able to invest his opportunities wisely, and he became rich because he became great at what he had to opportunities. Rich man opportunities. When you realize just how blessed you are, uh, by God, it begins to change your stature. It begins to change the way you think. James, Scott James, I'll never forget it. We're going down the road in his old Chevrolet pickup, probably with the windows down because he don't have air conditioning in it. He has his hand on the, up there driving. He said, well, Charky, I wanted to complain, but I remember that sermon and come to find out I'm a rich guy. He said, it, can, it changed the way I think. And church, that's what I want us to do. I want it to change the way I think. I want us to have a little swagger in our walk. I want us to hold our heads up and say, God, you have blessed me beyond measure. I am a rich man. I know it. I am a blessed person. Help me be good at being rich. Listen to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. You see, as Christians, you're going to be blessed. Let's just talk financially. You should be blessed as being Christian because you should be walking in wisdom as a Christian. When you walk in wisdom, then you don't do certain things. And it it helps you be wise with your money and your resources and everything. You should be blessed as you continue to develop in your walk with the Lord. Not because if you just pray hard, God gives you a million dollars. But if you pray hard, God gives you wisdom and direction. Listen to Ecclesiastes 5.19, says this. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, for this is a gift of God. We're to be happy because of the blessings that God has given us. It's a gift. Some of you may be pushing back and thinking, no, no, no. I don't care what you say, preacher. You may be rich, but I am not rich. I'm not a wealthy person. So let me prove it to you. If you make $32,400 a year, $32,400 a year, or more, then you're among the top 1% earners in the world. You're one percenter. If you make 32400 you are 1%. You are the top 1% of the richest people in the world. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? I'm not rich. I am too. I'm a one percenter. If 
I was in a motorcycle gang, I'd have a patch. That's why we read the second part of Luke chapter 6. And we say, God, I don't want to, I don't want to prostitute my wealth. I thank you for the blessings that you've given me. Some of you are not just rich, but you're mega rich. I'm not mega rich. Well, maybe Sheila and I together, plus the business, maybe. But some here are mega rich. If you make $80,000 a year, you are in the top 0.1%, the richest people in the world. 80000 You are not only rich but you are mega rich. You may be going, no, that's stupid. You can't compare our money to Mexico money. You want to trade? We've got the resources and opportunities they'll never touch. We are the rich. Church, when you compare yourself to everyone alive today, you are the rich. You may say, well, look, there's nobody in, in uh, Haiti that makes, you know, you can't compare us to Haiti. Yeah, you're right. We're not digging through the trash for dinner. Church, when you compare yourself to everyone alive today, we are the rich, and it doesn't matter that there's somebody in the world richer than you are. It doesn't matter that there's people in this church who have more money than me or I have more money than them, it doesn't matter. The facts are, we all have more than 99% of the world around us. And I want to be sensitive, because I know that there's some here who have had to have two jobs. I know that there's single parents struggling to take care of their kids and to provide for their children. I, I know that. I'm no fool. I know that that, that house payment may take every dollar you have in your pocket this month. But you've got to understand, despite that, we are still the megas. We are still the rich. When people in developing countries, when they look at, uh, they, yes, them who are the rich, that'd be 1.3 billion people or 70.74% of the world. If you ask them, what's rich look like? They would say, People who have cars, if you have a car, you're rich. Church, if you have a car, you're in the 0.3% richest people in the world. Are we blessed people? Absolutely. They would say that some people are so rich that they not only have one car, but they have two cars. One for him and one for her. They'd say they're not only so rich, there's some who's so rich that they have uh, uh, garages or houses to put their cars in. Some are so rich that they even have three cars, garages, houses for their car, her car, and his car, and all the children's stuff that don't fit in the house no more. That's rich. They would say the rich will get in their cars and they will drive to a bigger city 50 miles away and they'll pass 100 restaurants. To go eat at one. Rich people not only have one meal, but they'll have three meals in one setting. One of them's called appetizer. One of them's called the main course. And some even dessert. That's what rich is. You ask 74% of the world, what is rich? What did, give me a definition of the rich. And they would say, rich people can walk into these large closets and they got clothes from the top to the bottom and they run their hands through all those clothes and what do they say? I don't got nothing to wear. Yeah. And yet some of them still have tags on them. So church, first thing we've got to do is admit that we are the rich. We are the rich. We've got to understand that we are the blessed in this world. 
And because God has blessed us, we need to be good at being rich. We've got to be good at being rich. We've got rich man opportunities. But the good news is, we are rich. But here's the bad news. You ready? The good news is we're rich. The bad news is we are rich. Remember the story of the rich young ruler went to Jesus and said, Jesus, what do I got to do to, uh, to enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus turned to him and said, sell everything you got and come follow me. You realize if he had done it, we'd be reading about him today. But he had too much. And you could look at him and go, what an idiot. Or, well, I mean, you could look at him and be somewhat judgmental, but then we just turn that story to ourselves, and we think, how many times has God called us to something? And we turn away. God wasn't saying to him that his wealth was wrong. What Jesus was saying is, I want you to come follow me. I, want, I got a new plan for you. I want you to become a fisher of man. But it was too hard for him. Listen to Luke chapter 18, 24 and 25. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard is it for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? And then it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for one of the rich to enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about us. Us. Not the guy who's got more money than you. He's talking about us. There's three challenges. I'm almost done. There's three challenges uh, that we have as rich people. First challenge is it's hard to depend on God. When we've got the money, we really don't need to depend on God because we can take care of it ourselves. It's at the moment when we have cancer in our family, we all of a sudden realize there's a need. But when you don't have food on the table, really, truly food on the table, then you've got to depend on God. It's harder for a rich person because we don't have a dependence on God. We, I mean, like I said, if you don't have no food, we can go to, to get food stamps. If you need assistance with your utilities, you can go to Compassion Course of Canada or other situations. So it's hard to depend on God because we can really take care of things ourselves. We can get a low monthly payment. Second reason it's hard for a Christian to enter the kingdom of God or follow the Lord is because our wealth can become a distraction to us. If we, um, we've got enough money for uh, all these extra activities, me and, uh, me and uh, Eddie Gregory was talking, and he said, you know what, Charky, all too often when a guy gets a boat or he gets a camper, he said, next thing you know, they're just, they're gone. They're, they're, they're gone, they're camping, they're... You just never see them anymore in the church. And in the church ain't going to get you to heaven, but it is somewhat of a kind of evidence of where your, your focus is, you know. And so we got to be careful. Is, is a camper bad? Is a boat bad? Absolutely not. But the problem is, is, as rich people, we can get ourselves into these things. The next thing we know, we're not really, we've allowed the things of the world. C.S. Lewis wrote in his book, uh, Screw Tape Letters, if, he got, if the devil can't get us to sin, he'll get us busy. There's some truth to that. And we all, every one of us, have got to be careful. Got to be careful. Got to keep God as our first priority. Thirdly, we have a great responsibility because of what God has given us. We have a great responsibility. Church, you and I, not just a guy who has more money than you, you and I have a great responsibility. Jesus said, to, to, uh, to much that has been given, much is required. What it need, each of us need to understand is that Jesus is talking to us. He's talking to you, and he's talking to me, and he's telling us that you have been given much. You're blessed because of where you live. You're blessed because of the opportunities you have. And so rather than just simply fold your hands and say, it's all about me, you simply say, all of us say, God, Lord, you've blessed me beyond measure. 
is help me know how to bless. Help me know how to be good at being rich. Help me know how to, to, uh, to not allow my opportunities to become a distraction to me. To help me to see my opportunities as a blessing from the Lord. Help me to be good at being the rich. Church, truth is, we all have a different amount of money in our bank account, and I hope you guys got a whole bunch. I got hope you guys have a whole bunch. We all got different money in our bank account. But when we look past our neighbor, we look past our community, we look into foreign nations and overseas, that's when we all of a sudden turn our eyes back. That's when we realize we are blessed. So then from the, pers the person here who has the least amount of money in your bank account, I want to ask you, how are you being obedient? I'm not talking about tithe. Nothing to do with tithe. Person with the least amount of money in your pocket, how are you being obedient with your mega riches? Are you being obedient? But you've got to leave here today with the knowledge in that fact that you are the rich. If you walk out those doors saying that pastor has no idea what you're doing, you're saying, God, I sacrifice all my blessings. I prostitute all my blessings that you've given me and all my opportunities because you haven't given me enough. Let's walk out those doors with a little swagger and a little humidity, humility, understanding that what God's given us a big responsibility. And that is not to just worry about ourselves. Thank the Lord for the blessings he's given us and enjoy those blessings, but then turn around and see those who are hungry, thirsty. Because Jesus says, blessed are they. Blessed are they. If we're the hands and feet of Jesus, we don't look at them and look at them as lazy or stupid governments or tyrants or whatever. We look at those people as, as Jesus' children, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we do all we can to help. Right? We're the blessed. We're the rich. Let's go find something good to eat. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we truly, you've, you've blessed us with, with opportunities. You've blessed some with great talents. You've blessed all of us with talents. You've blessed us with different opportunities, and, and uh, you've put us in the greatest nation in the world, a nation that's been blessed by you. A nation that has been one nation under God. And because of that, because of that anthem and that desire, Lord, we are a blessed nation. And God, it's all too often we just want to compare ourselves with those who have done better financially. We want to feel like victims. And the truth is, God, the only time I'm a victim is because of poor choices in my life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be people who are wise beyond our years. Help us, God, to be a church that understands we are the wealthy. God, not, not because of what we've been able to just create, but because of where we live, the opportunities in front of us. And Lord, I pray that we would have a changed heart because of that fact. Help us, God, not to just always look at every issue as a responsibility for somebody else. But Lord, when issues are presented in, presented in front of us, Help us, God, just to be able to say, God, how can I help? Show me what I can do. Lord, I want to thank you for each individual here today. Lord, as we talk about finances, God, I pray that you would bless our people. I pray that you'd bless our people. God, I pray that you'd help us to be a people who use our wisdom and courage and, and be good at what we do, Father. Help us, God, to create money and, and be able to take care of our families and provide, Lord. Help us, God, not to spend every dime we get foolishly. Help us, God, to be wise. Help us to be good at what you've given, blessed us with. God, for all you do, we praise you, and it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. All right. God bless each of you.
Oh, hey, does anybody have uh, does anybody have uh, raffle tickets? You do. Okay, if you're wanting to, you got one. Okay. All right. Uh, don't forget about this week. I do have one raffle ticket up here. If somebody's wanting a raffle ticket for the, okay. All right. God bless each of you.